Hey everyone, it's time for another Lightroom editing tutorial. In this video, we're going to create a ghostly forest scene out of this foggy, bright image. So if you want to follow along this Lightroom tutorial, check the description of the video. There you can find a link to download the raw file. Now, without much more talking, let's get into the editing. And the first thing I want to do is to just change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will give us some more base saturation in the foliage in the foreground. Other than that, this won't change much. Looking at the histogram, you can see it's a very, very bright exposure. You might be wondering why I did shoot it like this. The reason is pretty simple. I do want to have all the details in the shadows. So I just expose to the right, which means you can see Although it's super bright, there's no overexposure going on, which means we can just drop the exposure and we get all the details we need from the highlights while still having all the details in the shadows. So that is very, very important for this shot. And as I want to make a very dark, ghostly image, I'm going to bring down the exposure quite a bit. This is looking much better immediately. We already have some kind of horror movie vibe, so that's great. Now for the colors. On those kind of scenes, it's super easy to set up the mood. All I need to do here is to bring down the temperature and thus you can see how the light is turning into this ghostly blue color tone. I don't want to overdo it, so let's just bring it up slightly. I can further work on the colors later with some split toning. For now, this looks like a good spot. Also, I am not going to touch the tint. I think that looks good this way. Now, as we have brought down the exposure, we are kind of missing some bright parts. And for that reason, I can bring up the highlights and I can safely turn them up all the way, which just adds some nice contrast and also just makes the light a little more interesting. So we can just see those silhouettes of the trees in the back a little better. We can do the same with the whites, but here we need to be careful with overexposure because it's kicking in quite fast as we push the white slider. Contrast is looking good and it's not too bright. Next up, I do also want to push the shadows a little bit for the details in the darkest areas. And at the same time, I do want to bring down the blacks, which will just improve the contrast of the scene. Great. Then let's also try to make this image a little softer. For that, I'm going to bring down the clarity very, very slightly. And I'm also going to drop the dehaze. This will further brighten up the image. So be very careful with this slider. Then let's bring up the texture so we get some sharpness in the smaller details of the image. And at this point, I might want to go on and drop the contrast a bit. Again, this will help with the soft look. So this looks quite good in my opinion. And after just those basic exposure adjustments, we have turned this bright image into this darker horror film like set. All right, then what can we do next? I would say we jump into the masking stuff. Although there is not much going on, I still want to use a linear gradient just for the foreground here, because I have the feeling this area lacks a bit of contrast. And that's because this area is actually not that affected by the fog as the areas in the distance. So I do want to change that. Here I'm just bringing up the dehaze and I'm also going to push the clarity, add a little bit of texture, and I think I'm going to bring down the saturation a notch. Okay, nice. Then I'm also going to apply a linear gradient for the top part. Here, let's see, I do want to add a little more contrast, so I'm trying to bring down the blacks. And I'm also bringing down the shadows, which looks really, really good in this case. And I guess this is already it for the masking stuff. Let's try to enhance the color some more. To start this, I am going into the HSL panel first. Here, let's set up the hue. 
I really don't like how the foliage looks in the foreground and that is mostly because there are some greens and yellows sprinkled in there. So what I'm doing now is to just bring down the yellow hue, maybe the green hue as well and thus I'm just turning those colors into a simple orange tone which works great with the blue of the fog. Also I might want to raise the aqua hue just to give the fog in the distance some more of a deep blue color tone. And next up, let's head into the saturation tab. Here I'm going to bring down the red saturation, which will mostly affect the foreground, of course. I'm also going to boost the orange tones. I'm boosting them quite a bit, actually. And let's see if we can bring up the yellow tones as well. That's not looking too good, so I'm not going to raise them too much. All right, then for the luminance tab, I'm going to bring up the orange luminance, making the foliage a little brighter, just so we can see a bit more what's going on in the foreground. I'm also going to push the yellow luminance, just like that. And let's maybe play around with the red luminance as well. Perfect. Let's jump into the split toning. Here we can really work on this blue color tone I'm aiming for. In this case, we are only going to work on the midtones and the shadows for both of them. I'm going to set up the hue with something blue like this. And let's bring up the saturation. I'm going to use just a minimal amount here. Now let's switch over to the midtones and go for the same color range. And again, slightly bump up the saturation. Perfect. Now, a cool thing to do with this shot in the split toning tab is to actually play around with the luminance. So let's head back into the shadows. And if I'm going to drop the luminance here, you can see we can add some really cool contrast. So I'm going to play around with that for a bit, trying to get a few areas a little darker without unexposing, of course. And we could also go into the midtones, try the same thing here. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, I don't think I'm going to touch the midtones. Maybe the highlights where I'm going to raise the luminance. Just like that, which will give us a little more contrast as well. So, looking good so far. Next up, let's head into the calibration tab all the way down. Here, I'm just going to drop the blue primary hue a bit. And I'm raising the saturation again. That looks awesome. Finally, we can sharpen this image, of course, in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings by dropping the radius, increasing the details, adding some masking, and then just adding some more sharpening. All right, and that is the image after the Lightroom adjustments. At this point, I would say we are probably 99% done. However, there are a few sensor spots here and there, which I'm going to just fix in Photoshop, which I'm not going to include in this video. So I hope this Lightroom tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.